Hi, I'm Glenn Dewis and welcome to episode... ...of my video podcast. <laughs> Okay, so this week we're actually going to be retouching one picture in both parts of this actual episode. And the picture is the one that you can see on screen now. This is one that was taken at a recent uh, Dynamic Duo workshop that I did with my buddy Kieran Neverson up in Halifax. And this is a guy called Rob Warrancy. Now, before we actually get into this, I just want to say a big thanks to the folks who attended the workshop, because it's those guys who said they were happy for this to be going out now as a tutorial to be made available to everyone. So thanks a lot for that, guys. But this picture you can see on screen now is the finished result. The out of camera shot is this one here. So if I put these two side by side, you can see there's a fair bit of work that we need to do. So we're gonna start off in Lightroom, then head over to Photoshop to add some final touches. So like I said, there's a lot to get on with, so let's get cracking. Okay, so I'm gonna go through this now at quite some pace, but obviously being video, you can stop, start, pause, and rewind just to make sure they get all the information. But there's a lot to go through. Now, when I look at this, this image here as it is, straight away I can see that the background needs to be darkened up, and also there's an area down here in his arm where it seems to go into darkness. So I'm gonna actually want to brighten that area up. So my thoughts are, I'm gonna actually create, first of all, a virtual copy. So one can be dark, and one can contain the brighter part of this arm. So I'm gonna right click on the thumbnail here in the bottom and I'm gonna choose Create Virtual Copy. Now the first copy, this is the one that I wanna actually darken the background up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to my uh, adjustment brush and I'm gonna choose, make sure that it says Auto Mask because that's gonna really help me out here. And as always, I'm gonna make sure that it's on the Show Selected Mask Overlay so I can really see where it is on painting. First things first, I'm gonna reset the sliders back to their default of zero, and I can do that by clicking on the uh, word effect just over here on the right-hand side in the develop module. Could, uh, click on that twice, or I can hold down my Alt key. You'll see it changes to reset, and I click on that, and all the sliders go back to zero. It's only exposure that I'm gonna be using, so I'm gonna bring that down just a little bit. It doesn't really matter how much I do that, because I can change that on the fly once I've actually painted in the area that I want to darken. So now with my adjustment brush, I'm gonna start painting over the area of the background now that I want to go dark. There's a really bright bit by his hand, which I'll have to do later on in Photoshop, but while we're doing this now, you can actually see that I can paint quite closely to Rob, but because of that auto mask option, it's been quite good how it's not going over all of him, because I'm being quite sloppy here with the painting. So I'm just very, very quickly painting in these kind of areas here. Now if I go too far over, we know that we've got the erase option so I can quickly come in. In fact, that there was a great option of how the auto mask works. So now I'm gonna click on erase and I'm just gonna paint it off areas that I don't want it to be. I certainly don't want it on his hair. That's dark enough. We'll check on his arm just down here as well. Let's just feather that just a little bit so it's nice and soft the way that background blends in. And we'll take a little bit off his arm just here and we certainly don't want it on his skin. It's just the background that we want to darken. So something like that, and I'm going quite quick. Obviously, if you were doing this on your own images, you'd be taking a lot longer just to make sure that you're a lot, a lot more accurate, or even more accurate even, to make it proper English. Okay, so that's good about there. Turn off the Show Selected Mask Overlay. Now I can use Exposure to really darken down that background. So that's looking good for now. And yes, I know there are these areas just around about here that I need to sort out. So that's that one. Now let's go to the brighter image and we'll just click on that one there, close this down. And all I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna come down out of the adjustment brush, just use the global changes here where I can come in and I'm gonna increase the blacks, increase the shadows, just to the point where I can start to see some detail coming in on the underside of Rob's arm here, because that's what I'm gonna mask in later on when we're over in Photoshop. So we can bring that up. Bring down the highlights just a little bit. Let's just play around just so I can see enough brightness on that arm. And to be honest, I think that's probably enough now. It doesn't need to be much, just needs to be a little kick of light there underneath the arm. 
So now that we've got that, I've got my two images, I've got the dark one and I've got the brighter one, I wanna send both of these images now into Photoshop, but not as separate documents. I want them both to be in the same document so that I can mask them out. And I actually want the darker image to be on top, so I'll click on that one first, hold down my shift key, then click on the brighter image so they're both selected, then I'm gonna to go to the photo menu at the top of the screen, edit in, and then one of the options it gives me is open as layers in Photoshop. I click on that, it then takes me over into Photoshop. Okay, so here we are in Photoshop, then we can see we've got the dark layer on the top, and if I turn that off, you can see the light layer below. So what I wanna do now then, is just show some of the brightness on the underside of this arm, which is coming from the layer at the bottom of the layer stack. So with the uppermost layer selected, I'm just gonna click on a layer mask so that I can then paint with black and reveal some of the brightness underneath. So I'm now painting with a nice soft black brush. I click around about his elbow and I'm gonna drag down just a little bit just so we can start to see that brightness appear underneath. Don't worry about being too accurate because now I can paint in the opposite color white just to take it off where I've gone too far. I only wanna see just a little bit of that brightness on the underside of the arm because I think without that, the art, this part of the arm tended to kind of like disappear into nothing. It seemed like the arm had either gone really small or it was just hanging in midair. So something like that looks good. Now if you want that brightness there to be just a little bit brighter, what you can do is actually just click on the uh, layer mask and then go to the image menu, adjustments and levels, and then you can just use the mid-tone slider here to drag across to the right or to the left to make it brighter or darker. But I think round about there is fine for me. I'll just paint away just a little bit more like so. Something like that's fine. In fact, just a little bit too much there and paint that back in, something like that's fine. Now there's only one other area, this area is just too bright, so I'm actually gonna click on the thumbnail of the dark image, get my brush, uh, black brush, uh, painting 100% opacity, hold down my alter option key to get the color sampler, and click on the dark area just outside of it, so then it samples that color into my foreground, and I can paint this away now. I'm gonna zoom in nice and close, because I don't wanna go over his fingers. I'm not gonna paint completely soft, otherwise it gets difficult when you paint right up to the skin here. So and we're just painting over just to get away that brighter part there. So then now the background is all gone to complete darkness, which is what we want for this low key image. So something like that's looking good. Double click on the hand tool, take us to full view. Now what I also want to do now then is look at maybe doing a little bit of blemish removal using Camera Raw, maybe even use a plugin like Topaz Clarity, and also a little bit of Liquify, but I can't do that at the stage that we are at the moment, because basically what I want is the image to be as it is, you can see on screen now, but it's actually being made up of these two layers. I need these two layers to be combined together. Ordinarily, you might think of doing a merged layer, which is where you do that big keyboard shortcut of Control, Alt, Shift, E, or Command, Option, Shift, E, but the problem with that is it's destructive. So any editing I did after that, if I wanted to change something before it, I'd have to redo lots of work. But if you've watched any of my videos before, you know that I'm a big fan of smart objects. So what we can do is actually put both of these layers now into a smart object. So with the upper layer selected, Hold down my shift key, click on the one below, and we'll go to the fly out menu at the top of the layers panel and choose convert to smart object. So Photoshop will now put both of these layers into one layer so I can carry on through my retouch, but it'll always, always give me access to them later on should I need to maybe come in and tweak just a couple of things. So Photoshop will now convert that to a smart object and we can then carry on and dive into camera raw, plugins, and even maybe do a little bit of body shaping using Liquify. So now we've got this smart object, I think the first thing I shall do is go to liquify. So we we'll go to filter and liquify. If you're not on the Creative Cloud, just bear in mind that you can't use liquify as a smart filter just yet, okay? So this is only gonna be for people who are on the Creative Cloud. So we're now gonna dive in, and there's a couple of things I wanna do. First of all then, let's just zoom in onto this little lower part here of his waist. I wanna push this little bit in just here. So to make sure I don't affect anywhere else, I'll get a freeze mask tool from the left-hand side and paint, we'll make sure we've got this, uh, where is it, show mask needs to be selected. And we can paint down this part of the arm here just so that wherever I paint doesn't get pushed and pulled around as well. So that's fine, I'll get the forward warp tool, a fairly good sized brush, and now I can just push that area in something like, like that's looking good. 
we can show turn off the show mask and if I think I've gone too far I can then just click over here to the reconstruct slider click on that and then I can bring it back just a little bit just to make it look that bit more realistic something like that's fine click OK let's double click on the hand tool uh, to get a full view and I think I maybe might just give his shoulders a little bit of a boost so I'm going to get the forward warp tool again increase the size of it with my right bracket key and just push up a couple of times on his shoulders like so and the one over here and a little bit on his on his lats just here and I might even give his thighs just a little bit of meat so I'm going to increase the brush even more and just bring those thighs out and the hamstrings on the other side so that's looking good we click OK go back into Photoshop so now what we can do is I want to do a little bit of blemish removal. Let's just zoom in onto his face here. We've got like a couple of blemishes to expect and also a little bit of stretch marks here where the skin has really been stretched from all these muscles and it's kind of given us these little stretch marks. So to get rid of those, I'm going to go to Filter, Camera Raw Filter, and then we've got the Spot Remover in there. And the updated version 5.2 is absolutely superb for this kind of work we want to do now. So let's just zoom in a little bit closer onto Rob just here. And we'll get the spot removal from the top here in Camera Raw, making sure that it's set to heal. And all I'm going to do is use my left or right bracket keys and we'll just get rid of some of these stretch marks just here. That's looking good. And you'll see that Camera Raw does a great job of choosing areas to select so that it kind of blends in and matches this with the skin surrounding it. So that's looking good. Is there any on the face? I'm not sure if we need to do any on the face as well. Maybe just a couple on the face we can just do just to show you. But obviously if you're doing your own research and you take a lot longer, just taking your time. The idea here is that I can just zoom through and show you random techniques for your own physique retouching. That's looking good. In fact, one thing I have noticed, I want to just lift his chin here so I will need to go back into liquify. So let's just click OK now that we've removed some of those blemishes. And over here now in the layers panel where it says liquify, I can actually double click on the name there to go back into the liquify. If I wanted to, I could change the things that I've done already. But let's just do that change on his chin here. Again, I'm going to get the forward warp tool decrease the size of it a little bit and what I am going to do is where we've got to can see the line of his neck here anywhere I push up I'm just going to follow that line so let's just lift his chin by dragging up over to that kind of like I don't know 11 o'clock kind of position push up there just to bring his chin up just a fraction like so and click OK so that's blemish removal we've done a bit of liquify the last thing I want to do at this stage and again I can do this as a smart object is actually using a plugin and the one that I want to use on this one because it works really well is called Topaz Clarity by Topaz Labs so we come down to the filter menu Topaz Labs and choose Topaz Clarity and this really does give your pictures some real punch it's perfect for this kind of stuff You've got loads of options within Topaz Clarity, but generally I only ever muck around with the ones on the right hand side where it says micro contrast and low contrast. And you'll see as I zoom these sliders over to the right hand side, look what happens to the picture of Rob in the middle here. It really does start to get quite gritty and I think it really works for Rob's skin tone to create this kind of look. So something like that's fine. Great thing is, I tried this using Clarity within Camera Raw, but it actually gave me some halos around it. So some people have said in the past, why do you need Topaz Clarity when you've got Clarity within Camera Raw? Well, it's like I've always said, there's never a one-click fix. You might sometimes find that what works on one image doesn't work on another, and this is a perfect example of the Clarity. So that's as far as I want to go. I'll then click OK and then go back over into Photoshop once Clarity or Topaz Clarity has done its processing as you can see in the progress bar down the bottom of the screen. Hi, I'm Glenn Dewis, and I want to take just a few moments of your time to let you know about a full length downloadable tutorial I've recently added to my website called The Editor. Now the tutorial kicks off with a look behind the scenes so you get to see how the original photograph was taken so you get an understanding of the lighting setup, camera settings, what kind of background to use and more before we then head over into Lightroom with the raw file and get to work on the retouching. 
we're going to go through preparing our RAW file, cleaning up the image, improving the lighting, the colour, spot removal, skin retouching, and then how to make the eyes really pop before taking things up a level and heading over into Photoshop. Now one thing to mention, if you don't use Lightroom, that's absolutely no problem at all because everything can also be done in Camera Raw. Now once we're in Photoshop, this is when we want to get to work on adding character, depth and dimension. As I show you how to use dodging and burning techniques on faces, how to add in that great looking coloured background and spotlight, how to add that painterly cartoon look, even how to make a cigar look like it's a light smoking the healthy way, or in other words, the Photoshop way, and much, much more. Now the fantastic thing about this tutorial is that I show you how to work completely, 100% non-destructively, so that at any stage during the retouching or at a later date, you can dive in and make changes without having to redo lots of work, saving you lots of time and frustration. Now also with this tutorial, you get the original raw file so you can follow along, which is definitely the best way to learn. You get the full layered Photoshop file, the final image, plus a bonus video. Not forgetting the 15 videos that takes you through the entire retouching from start to finish. So folks, that's the editor, the full length downloadable tutorial available now on my website, glyndewis.com. Okay, so now that Topaz Clarity has done its processing, we're back in Photoshop and now we can carry on with the next stage. And what I want to do now is some dodging and burning. Now, if you're not aware of how I do the dodging and burning, make sure you go back to my YouTube channel. There's plenty of videos there, earlier episodes of this particular show where I go through it exactly. Because like I said, we are going to rush through things here. So what I'll do then, I add a blank layer. I go to the edit menu, choose fill, and I fill it with 50% gray so that Photoshop has got some pixels to cling onto. Um, I'm then gonna go to the dodge tool. Make sure that at the top there in the options, we've got set to mid-tones, although it doesn't really matter because we're only working on a 50% gray layer. Exposure, around about 10%, and also a little tick where it says protect tones. Now, when I'm working on dodging and burning, generally on skin, I'll change the blend mode of this to soft light. So we'll change it over here to soft light. We'll rename this layer Dodge and Burn. And then basically what I want to do is just work around and where the bright parts are, I shall do some dodging, just click down a few times. And where the dark parts are, I can do some burning. So especially on these abdominals here, it's not difficult for us to see where we need to work because Rob's come fully equipped with his own dodging and burning. But I'll just do some very, very quick bits here, darkening down the shadows and mid-tones, brighten up the highlights and you'll very quickly start to see how you can really start to emphasize everything there. Just be careful when you're dodging and burning, it is addictive and you'll probably find if you're not careful that you can do too much very, very quickly. But you'll see already, after a few seconds turning it on and off, we can see the abdominals there coming and starting to take shape. Now let me just make sure that I've not got any settings here in this brush, which I have. There we go. Now, I'm not going to go through the whole of this uh, dodging and burning. I'll do that and we'll jump forward. But one area I just want to show you, I think if we look at Rob's chest here, maybe it's because of the lighting, but I think this little bit, because there's a shadow coming down one part of it, it kind of looks like the chest has been dropped. It kind of sinks in just a little bit. So what I'm going to do is, we know that when we do dodging and burning, anywhere that's bright is coming towards you. Anywhere that's dark is going away from you. So I want to kind of lift this area of the chest. So what I shall do is I'll just increase the size of my brush and I'll brighten it with a dodge tool just to lift it up a little bit like so. So already when I turn it on and off, if you look at the chest, it no longer really looks like it's been um, like it's dropping down a fraction. But now it looks too bright. What I am going to do is go to the burn tool now and just burn the whole of that chest area down so everything then is even. Now I don't need to keep coming over to the toolbar and choosing the burn tool. I can just hold down my alt or option key when I'm using the dodge tool and it will flip over to the burn tool and vice versa. You won't see any changes in the toolbar at the top or sorry, in the options at the top, but you are using the opposite tool. So now I'm holding down my Alt key, I've got the burn tool, I'm just a few strokes over the chest there just to darken it down. Turn it on and off and you can see we've no longer got a chest that kind of looks a little bit like it's dropping, but that's not down to Rob, that's down to the lighting. So I'll carry on with the dodging and burning and then we'll jump forward and carry on with the rest of the retouch. 
All right, so just jumping forward then, I've done a bit of dodging and burning. Not too much because Rob doesn't really need much of it because he comes equipped with his own. But if I just turn that layer on and off, you can see there the effect that's having. Brightening the highlights, darkening down the shadows and the mid-tones. Okay, so jumping forward then, the next thing I want to do is do a bit of a, a desaturate the image. And I'm going to do that first of all by adding a black and white adjustment. But I'm not going to do it using a black and white adjustment within Photoshop or I'm not going to go to a plugin like, I don't know, Nick Silver Effects Pro 2. What I am going to do is use a gradient map. Now, to use a gradient map, I'm just going to press D on my keyboard first of all, so that my foreground and background colors go to their default of black and white. And then I'm going to come up to the adjustments here on the right hand side and click on the bottom right where it says gradient map. When I click on that, you'll see that the image becomes quite a nice, powerful black and white image. But the great thing is, and I actually showed this in a video earlier on, and you'll find that on my YouTube channel. What the great thing is now is when we're in the properties, I can click on the gradient that's actually making up this black and white image. I can come in, and in the middle section here where it says smoothness, I can use that slider to flatten out the contrast there so it's not quite so contrasty. But I can also use these sliders. I can click on the bottom left one and drag it in to sort of dictate how much black is dominant in the image. Or I can click on the one on the right hand side to brighten up the image as well and make the whites and the highlights areas more dominant. When you also click on either one of these pointers, either side, and you'll get a little marker comes up in the middle. Then you can click on that and control the midtones of the picture as well. So you really can dial in what kind of black and white image that you really, really want. So I'm going to go for something around about this kind of look here. I'm not going to go for something completely black and white because what I'm going to do is I'm going to click OK and then rather than having this adjustment layer here at 100%, I'm going to take it down to around about 75. I just want to see a little bit of that color coming through so I've got a nice desaturated image. Now the next thing I want to do is just control the light a little bit and I want the only light really dominant in the picture to be on Rob's face, his upper body and the top part of his jeans. So I want to feather it off just a little bit more in the lower part and I can do that using a gradient. So what I'm going to do is just close down this uh, properties here. I'm going to add a blank layer and I'm going to make sure that my foreground color is now black and I can swap these two over here, the foreground and background by pressing X on the keyboard. So just keep pressing it, they'll keep swapping around. But I want the foreground to be black I'm going to press G on my keyboards to get a gradient and then the top left here I can now choose what kind of gradient I want and I want the one that's going to be foreground tra to transparent which is the second one along I'll click OK and then what I'm going to do is just zoom out just a little bit with this gradient I'm going to click in the bottom part of my picture just outside the frame there hold down my sh sh um, shift key click and drag upwards and that's what you're going to see is going to feather off the light just a little bit now if you think that's too much because it's on its own layer we can then just reduce the opacity just to lower the intensity of that there a little bit turn that layer on and off and you can see the effect that's having so maybe just drop it down just a fraction more just felt like it needed that light to be bleeding off just a little bit towards the bottom of the picture Right, there's not that much more that needs to be done, but there are a couple of little things I want to do just to finish it off and take it to that next level. So before we do that, let's just rename this layer here. We'll call that one Gradient, because that's where we added that Gradient. And because the last part now is a finishing touch, it's not something that I might want to keep, but it's just something I want to try. What I am going to do is actually create a merged layer at the top of the layer stack which as I've said before is actually destructive but I'm going to do nothing else after it it's just for the purpose of doing one thing so to create that merged layer we can do that big keyboard shortcut of control alt shift e or command option shift e but another way of doing it is going to select menu at the top of the screen choosing all then go and edit copy merged and then edit and then paste and what you'll see now at the top of the layer stack, if I turn every other layer on, the picture won't change. And that's because this layer now at the top is a merged layer of every single layer below it. So what I'm going to do is here, I'm going to actually increase the width of Rob to make him look just a little bit bigger. And I do this a lot because I tend to think that when I look through the camera of the person, they actually did look that way. When I get the pictures into the computer, it kind of makes them look just a little bit narrower than, than what I believe them or remember them being. So this is just one of those things, you don't have to do it, but it's certainly something I do, but I don't tell them I've done it, all right? So what we do to increase the width, 
we go to Edit and Free Transform. When the Free Transform handles come up at the top of the screen here, we've got loads and loads of numbers and options. The one we're interested in is where it says W for width, and it says 100%. What I want to do is increase the width of Rob, so I'm going to increase it to around about 105. I definitely don't go any more than five, like 105, or if I'm gonna make somebody smaller, I never go any less than 95, because I think if you go beyond that, it starts to look unrealistic. But if I just commit that by clicking the tick there, I'll get my move tool, pressing V, and just reposition Rob. If I turn that layer on and off now, it's almost like the after picture, the one where I've increased him, is the one that's real, and the one before it, when he's narrower, doesn't look real, so it kind of I think it's realistic. I think it works, and that's something I then to do quite a lot, uh, quite a lot even. Now the last thing I want to do, this is purely to show you how it's done. It's not something I would really need doing on this picture here, but I'm actually going to decrease the size of Rob's head. Now those of you who know what I do and you follow my work, you'll know that I've seem to have a fetish for increasing the heads. In this one, I'm going to actually decrease it. So I'm going to get the my freehand lasso tool, make a rough selection around Rob's head like so, something like like that and then go to layer new and then layer via copy with a keyboard shortcut there of command or control J that puts the head up on its own layer then I go to edit and free transform and I want the head here to be made just a fraction smaller but I've got to be careful that the width and the height stay in proportion so what I can do at the top here again where we've got the W for width H for height in the middle of it is a little chain icon if I click that both of them will be altered in the same proportion. So I'll just change one of them down to around about, I don't know, 97, just to take the head down a little bit. Click on the tick, we'll then zoom in to reposition it, so I press V on my keyboard to get the move tool, and I'm using my arrow keys now to position it. And you can see the areas that wanna line up, the back of his neck and this bit on his shoulder. So I'm just moving it around with my up and down, left and right arrow keys to so something like that is looking good. Where we go to around about there is fine. But we see when I turn it on and off, we've got these obvious lines. So I'm going to get a layer mask, get my brush, and we'll paint with a black soft brush at around about, I don't know, 80%, something like that, just so we can paint those lines away and help everything to blend in much more naturally. So now when I turn that layer on and off, you can see there's no blend, but the head is definitely been made just a fraction smaller, which you can see actually goes some way to making his body look even bigger. So the stage we're at now then is the picture pretty much finished. I mean, obviously we've gone through this very, very quickly and we would want to spend maybe a little bit more time on each section that we've gone through. We want to add a bit more clarity, we might want to do a bit more dodging and burning, maybe in the liquify, maybe removing blemishes, but you get an idea now of how you can actually build up and get your way through a physique retouch. Now there's one thing I want to do though before we now go into Lightroom, just so we can see that before and after one more time. If you were doing a pitch like this for, let's say, I don't know, for a magazine where you're going to have some text on the one side of it, what you can do is actually something like this. We can go to, tell you what, let's just create a duplicate of it by going to image and duplicate just so I can show you the kind of thing I'm on about. And we'll just flatten that one down there. What you could do is actually just get something like the crop tool. Now the crop tool most people think is for you use for cropping the image, making it smaller. But what you can also do is drag the handles outside of the image to increase the amount of space on either side of your model here, like so. So what we can do is let's just actually just crop it down just a little bit. So I'll bring a bit down from the top, bring a bit up from the bottom there like that. Now to fill in this area here of dead space here with this black, all I'm going to do is hold down my command or control key, click on the new layer icon in the toolbar, sorry, in the layers panel there, that'll put a new layer beneath my picture. I'll then click on the thumbnail of my own picture, I'm gonna get my um, color sampler, and I'm just gonna sample the color just on the outside of where Rob is, so that the, some, the color here gets sampled into my foreground color here. Now what I can do then is go to the bottom layer, go to Edit, Fill, and choose Foreground Colour from the options, so it then fills all that empty space with the colour I sampled all around Rob. So now I could just carry on adding text in to make it a proper commercial style image with all that, you could put Rob's name in it, you could go in a magazine, and so on and so forth. So let's now just quickly dive over to Lightroom so we can see the before and after. This is our finished picture, 
and this is what we started off with. If we put these two side by side, we can see in a very short time, we've gone through the whole process there, but that kind of gives you an overview very quickly of the kind of things you can do on a male portrait retouch. Okay, thanks for checking out this particular episode. I know that we went through things quite quickly there, but the beauty of video means that we can stop, start, pause, fast forward or rewind just to make sure they get all the content there. Now, as always, if there's any questions or comments, tips, tricks or techniques that you'd like to see in future episodes, just drop me a line to glynn at glynnjewish.com or leave a comment in the section below. And as always, make sure you click on the subscribe button, which is just about here on the screen. Basically, it means that anytime you go back to YouTube, you'll always know very quickly if any new videos have been posted. And please feel free to share this with anybody you think might like to see some of the content. But for now, that's it for this week. I'll see you next time.